Hey folks, welcome back. In this video, I'm gonna go over four different properties of waves. So we're gonna look at the crest, the trough, the amplitude, and the wavelength of a wave. So let's get started. So the first wave property we'll look at is called the crest of a wave. And the crest is the top point of a wave. So if we look at a wave diagram, you'll see the top point of a wave there is called a crest. Don't fall into the trap of calling this a peak because a peak there could also mean the peak down here, but we've got another name for that. And the name for that is called the trough. So the bottom point of a wave is the trough and that's the same spelling as the trough that say a pig would eat out of. And so we've now got two different names for the top and the bottom point of a wave, the crest and the trough. Now the next thing to mention is called the amplitude of the wave. And you'll see in this picture, we've got the amplitude labeled here. Now the amplitude is the vertical distance from the axis to the top of the wave or bottom of the wave. So that means the distance from the axis, the middle of the wave, to the top point of the wave, that is called your amplitude. We can also say though that the amplitude is from the trough to the axis or the axis to the trough. So it's either from the middle to the bottom or the middle to the top of the wave. Don't make the mistake of thinking that the amplitude is the full vertical height of the wave because it's not, it's just half the vertical height. Now another important thing to point out is that the energy of a wave depends on its amplitude. So the greater the amplitude of a wave, the greater the energy that is transferred by that wave. So let's say we were to increase the amplitude of this wave and it came up higher and went down lower than it is just now, then that means that that wave is carrying more energy from one place to another. So the bigger the amplitude, the bigger the energy that is stored and transferred by that wave. So a way of thinking about it is that the energy is stored inside the amplitude of the wave and the bigger the amplitude, the more energy can be stored in there. So the last property we'll look at is called the wavelength of the wave and this can be described in several ways. So the first one is that the horizontal distance from one crest to the next crest is called the wavelength. So if we look at this picture, remember the crest is the top point of the wave. So if we go from one crest to the next crest, then that is one wavelength. And wavelength can be given the symbol lambda. So this is a Greek letter and it's measured in meters because it's a length. So remember a length or a distance is gonna be measured in meters. That's the standard SI unit for a distance. So if we go from one crest to one crest, that is one wavelength. But we can also define wavelength as a distance from one trough to the next trough. So if we go down here, for example, there's one trough and there's the next trough. So that is also one wavelength. But if we want to define wavelength in more general terms, then we can do that by saying that it's the horizontal distance from one point on a wave to the same point on the next wave. So what we mean by that is, for example, if I was to choose this point here and then go to the same point on the next wave, well, I need to go all the way down, all the way back up and back to the start. And that is me now one wave along. So that is one wavelength in distance. One more example might be, say I was to choose a point over here and I was to go all the way up, all the way back down and back to where I started. Then if I wanted to get one wavelength along from this point, it would be over here. Okay, at this point here. That's all for this video, guys. I hope you found it useful. If you did, give it one of these, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.